Friday Sews and today we're talking about some stretch sewing um, and some old makes that are new again and um, some plans for the channel. Yay! Hello, hello and welcome to my channel Sewing Seams with Deb. Uh, thanks for joining me for today's Friday Sews. And uh, today we're going to have a chat about what I've been making, what my plans are, a little bit about what I'm wearing, um, and my plans for the channel, um, uh, very much in draft form, as they may be, and uh, a little bit about life. So let's get started. So first of all, what am I wearing? So I need to stand up to show you because it's all about the pants, really. These pants I made in 2020 and in my world, um, and it was no one else's rule, but in 2020, for me, that was the year of the pant. So I was trying to master the pants to fit me. And as you can see in this twirl, they don't look too bad. And this was my third or fourth try. And now I'm quite happy with that pattern. So that's mainly the one I go to for my um, dress pants. Um, so these are made out of 50% stretch wool blend. And I got that from Spotlight. And they're a lovely houndstooth. They are a little bit peeled, like peeling. And I have used that electric um, peeler, D pillar thingy. Um, and from time to time but it, because of the houndstooth it doesn't really show it and they're kind of like wearable pajamas or wearable tracky ducks as we say in Australia but they don't look daggy I don't think they do anyway that's them so uh, this was they're made from the sure fit designs pants kit so I purchased the, this kit late 2019 and that was part of my mission if you like for 2020 um, was to um, draft out and get happy with a size pants for myself and you know shorts the whole bit as it says here you can make all sorts of things once you've got it sort of fitting you and the crutch length and various so um, I don't use this pattern a lot, but when I do use it, now that I've got it fitting me, I'm extremely happy. So that's these pants. And because it's a bit cooler, I've dragged them out from the cupboard. So um, as I said at the start, what is old is new again. So um, you know what? When you get your um, change of season clothes ready to wear or start wearing them again, I don't know if it happens to you, but I think, oh, I forgot about these. These are awesome. They're so comfortable. I put so much effort into them. The only thing, they don't have pockets, but I still might go back and change them. It's never too late, right? So um, I'm, I'm wearing it with just a, a Tabitha tee. It's a three-quarter double brush poly tee that I made um, last end of last season. And uh, it's lovely and cosy. In fact, it's getting a little bit too warm. I've got the sun coming in in my beautiful winter sewing room. And this cardigan is the Harper cardigan, if you can see it. Oh, you can see the pants a bit there. The Harper cardigan. And the Harper cardigan I made a couple of times. And this is the one which I made to the classic length, it's known as. Um, now, the Harper Cardigan is Sinclair Patterns, and it's a free pattern. And I've, I've got it on my list of Make 9, which keeps growing. And I'm up to about Make 15 um, <laughs> and growing, as I said. Um, so I, I just find that it's just the right sort of throw on, throw off, build layers. In Perth, in WA, we kind of need a lot of layers. There's a lot of times throughout the year that we don't really need a wool jumper or a coat, as some of you realise that our weather's like, apparently it's like California. I don't, I've never been to the States. I'd love to come over. I'd love to come see you all. Anyway, that's another story. Um, anyway, so that's the Harper cardigan. 
um, in the classic length. So, um, and I've got little cuffs on it. So again, it's like wearable. It's like a wearable dressing gown. It's so comfy. So that's what I'm wearing. Now, what have I been making? Well, I made the PJs. Can you believe it? I can't believe myself. I just, I just thought, you know what? I'm doing it. And thank you so much for all those people that voted for um, Fabric 1, Fabric 2 or Fabric 3. It was overwhelming majority. Everybody thought Fabric 3, which I had 2.4 metres of, I believe. Um, and it's the cotton. I'll just grab them for you. And you'll also see a twirl. So here they are. And I squeezed out the whole pyjamas. Check them out. The whole pyjamas, top and bottom, out of the fabric. So that's the bottom, obviously, and the top. And um, I didn't even cut into that pink. Oh, and the pyjama pants, I put a cuff. I put a cuff on the bottom only because, <laughs> remember last time I was saying that Silly me, you should measure twice and cut once. Well, I did it again. Oops, I did it again. I know there's a song. Um, anyway, uh, so just in case they're a bit short, um, I've put the cuffs on. And also, does this drive you mad as well? When you're in bed at night and you go to roll over and the jamas come up to your knee and your ankle gets cold, that's annoying. So... Um, I, that's why I put these on, so I thought they, um, they'll they hopefully stay down on my ankles at night time in bed. And again, I just put that fabric tag. Um, I don't like it scratching me. So I'm pleased with those. I can't wait till it's washing day and I can um, try them out. So I'm going away next weekend, so I'll try them out then. Um, so, yeah, I got the whole pyjamas out of that meterage. And hardly anything left over, which is maybe a pair of undies or a singlet or something. If I'm lucky, I couldn't get much more out of it. Got my little self tag there so it doesn't scratch. And this fabric, oh, look what I had to do. What a twit. What a fool. <laughs> Kath and Kim would say, what a fool. Um, I extended the length of the sleeve well, I had it measured and I did check, but I actually didn't have quite enough fabric. So it wasn't my fault, right? <laughs> anyway, so I thought, well, I'll just shove a bit of pink at the bottom. And this is just some pink I had left over from a, um, a yoga um, top that I made back in summer. Um, it's quite heavy cotton, though, and it's quite stretchy. So then I thought, well, I might as well put little cuffs on it. So... <laughs> It's got extension to the sleeve plus a little cuff. Anyway, we'll see how that rolls. And the neck, I wanted to talk to you about this V. I'm not a champion at doing V necks. <laughs> Far from it. But pyjamas are good ones to practice on, right? So there's my V neck and it's got my, um, I think, top stitching. I didn't do the uh, twin needling. I thought it was too much fluffing around for me. They're only pyjamas. And you know what I thought? My saying, a blind man and a galloping horse be glad to see it. You heard that one? If he's blind, he's going to be glad to see anything. And it's galloping. He's going so fast, he can't see anything anyway. So <laughs> a blind man and a galloping horse be glad to see it. Whatever. Um, anyway, so this book... I, this is an oldie but a goodie. It's amazing, this book. And um, it's actually the book I learnt stretch sewing on back in 1985, 84, 85, around there. And um, I remember that I had the book and I was trying to remember how to do the, um, the V neck on stretch. And so it's got this amazing instruction here if you just want the the one style or the cross the mitre style I think it's called or the crossover style so I decided to try the crossover it didn't work out exact oh, I didn't cut the band long enough 
so I know where I went wrong and I've made a note in my book so I know next time <laughs> you know the trick about the book the trick about this notebook is remembering to look I know <laughs> um, anyway I've got notes there and the elastic that I cut uh, I even noted how um, long I made it so that next time and I did look from the previous pair so that's how I know how wide to make it and my little um, way of making it is I zigzag it on to start with the, the, I call it a triple stitch on the machine I know they've got some fancy name but it goes it's in a zigzag a big zigzag and it's got one two three one two three one two three so it's like that but duh, duh, duh. so um, I call it a triple stitch it's not um, but anyway I'll sew that on then I'll fold it over and then just sew uh, a very fine zigzag because it needs to be able to stretch over my <clears throat> sections um, and and you know jammies they need to be flexible and not go crack and the um, you know when you've got jar um, clothes on and you can hear the thread break Oof. and you think oh that's gonna I'm gonna have to fix that later Anyway, so that's the jamas. I'm very happy with those. Can't wait to wear them. And uh, thank you so much for your involvement. It's been a lot of fun. I also made another um, T-shirt, a uh, Tabitha tee, which I've written on there because this is just a copy out of the book, the stretch book, Tilly and the Buttons, good old tills. Um, so the Tabitha T-shirt's my tried and true. And so I needed a red T-shirt. One of my videos... Recently, I had a red T-shirt on and might have actually been my studio sewing room tour. Anyway, whatever it was, I thought, oh, that looks quite nice. But it's such a shabby old red T-shirt. I thought, I've got all this T-shirt fabric, which you'll see when I finally finish editing my, my fabric stash video. Uh, and I made, uh, I just made my Tabitha tee. It's long sleeve. It's out of double brush poly once again. And um, I did do the twin needling because it's it's a grown up piece of clothing. I'll be wearing it out and about. So I've done the uh, twin needling and I've got a little tag on there, which didn't turn out straight. Annoying. So I've done my twin needling. So I'm happy with that. So can't wait to wear that either. So that's going to be another um, weekend away item to wear. So you know when you make your new things, you wear them to death, as, a, as we say in the classics. We bond with them. So that's what I've been doing this week, aside from all these other things. Now I've got some plans to make my grandson some uh, winter T-shirts and some various things from this old pattern. Um, I've made him... Um, pants out of this before so I'll be making some of those in this coming week and weeks plural because um, I'm my trip to the east to Melbourne is July so um, I will be um, I'm starting to gather my uh, mind with my planning around what I can take and also colder weather he needs more so gonna get cracking on some of that and I've got that dark pink um, organic cotton fabric laid out ready to cut um, remember I was going to put that with the pajamas um, but so many people said that well let's keep it for uh, a top on its own and so I've taken that suggestion and I'm about to cut that out so I'm excited about that that's going to be really cool as well and da 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 big news you may or may not have noticed I've hit over a thousand subscribers and I want to say a special thank you to everyone who has subscribed. I'm having a ball. I'm having such good fun. And you know what? I'm just so keen and happy to share it with you. I just really feel like you're my, my people and I really am enjoying this experience and I'm really happy to have you along with me. So thanks for subscribing. And for those people that watch me but don't or the channel I should say watch the channel and don't or haven't subscribed yet I encourage you go ahead and subscribe you got nothing to lose you're going to watch it anyway so you may as well hit subscribe doesn't matter I don't know how it works oh and if you would like if you hit the thumbs up button that helps the channel as well plus it helps you 
uh, when you go searching for it because um, those busy little gremlins in the YouTube world, they figure it all out for you and send it off. So a thousand. So plans for the channel. I've got a running list in the back of my um, planning book on um, ideas for my vlogs, so what I love to wear, what in me made, uh, what I don't seem to wear, <laughs> why well, I make them and then I never wear them and why. Uh, me made bags, we've talked about that before, I'm going to make a, a vlog about that um, and I need to upcycle that pink shirt. Remember I got it from the op shop? Yes, got want to do that. I still haven't made a knitting vlog, so wow, I just feel like I've let you down with that but it's coming um sewing room yes I can tick that off let's tick that off um pattern stash that's coming fabric stash as I said I made it that's coming um and I also want to do top five or top ten patterns in stretch and top five or top ten haven't decided patterns in um woven uh also who do I watch Anyway, I've got quite the list here. Um, oh, <laughs> I've written down your school ball gown. And this is hilarious. I've got to try and get this photo, but I need permission because there's someone else in the photo. And I've got to work out how to cut. Anyway, um, but my mother made me my year, I think it was year 10, school dance. Might have been year 11. Don't remember. Oh, you should see it. <laughs> well, it looks like wearable pajamas, except a long dress. But in the 70s, this was, oh, dear, that just looks bad. But anyway, that's for the future. So that's the plan. But what I thought I might do, if you're keen, um, I'd like to do a QA and a um, vlog. Aside from a Friday sews, so just a QA and a um, vlog all on its own. So if you want to write down any questions that you'd like me to answer, um, what do you, a little bit about me, you want to know a bit more about me, um, a bit more about my sewing experience or lack of it, um, and any other questions you might have, and I will do my very best to answer them, but let's do that. So I'd love to do a Q&A. And the other thing, and I, I'm really keen to find out if, if any of you are interested, so please write it in your comments because I read every comment. Um, uh, after you hit a certain number of subscribers and viewers and all this hoo-ha in the back of um, YouTube gremlin world, um, you're allowed to do or you qualify to do um, some live uh, telecasts or broadcasts or whatever we call them, live chat-alongs. And I was thinking I'd like to do a chat-along. So down the track. So um, I think... I might aim for 2,000 subscribers. When we hit that, then we'll set a time and um, we can um, we can all catch up and and then um, have some sort of gathering. Um, but let's talk about that again into the future. So once again, uh, that's about it from me for today. And um, I'm real excited about um, my coming weeks and and showing you my fabric stash. And my pattern stash, that's, I haven't even filmed that yet, but it's coming. Um, and um, I do feel a little bit, um, ooh, what's the word? Vulnerable, a bit um, like I'm putting myself out there to show you my, my, um, my stash. Because, yeah, I, I mean, my inner voice tells me at times, why do you have so much fabric? Why why do you keep buying fabric? One and two, why aren't you sewing it? Good question. So <laughs> um please let me know if you've got any other things that you'd like to tell me and um uh let's keep chatting. So uh that's it from today and for today and uh I'll we'll see you again next week. Please take care. Happy sewing and I shall see you soon. Bye.